What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today we will continue with the RPG series. We'll go ahead and implement the sword trait so we can detect our enemy and apply damage and we'll go ahead and also add a hit animation, camera shake and also some sounds. So we start to improve a bit the you know combat system and so on. It's gonna be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is of course go ahead and uh, import our hit animations okay so what we're going to do is go into characters rpg character animations and go ahead and create a new folder this will be the hit uh, underscore reacts and go ahead and open up this folder and now i will be uh, you know be leaving the animations in the description so you can go ahead and download them they're again from the official epic games uh, free rpg template so i've just extracted the ones that we needed and leave them in a uh, Google Drive so it's easier uh, for you guys as always. So let's go ahead and open the folder, select the, you know, this both animations and just drag them into the content browser. And now we can go ahead and just say a reset to default just in case. And now we need to apply the skeleton, which in this case will be again the SK mannequin for the UE5. Okay, again, don't confuse with the UE4, it's the UE5, just the SK mannequin. And great, now we can just say import all, and within one, uh, some seconds, we have all the animations imported. There we go, you can see that's already looking really cool. Go, uh, go ahead and Ctrl Shift S to save everything, so there's no, you know, any lost progress. Okay, so right now when we go ahead and press play, we can go ahead and start attacking the combo and stuff. So basically, we have to make some sort of detection, so when we hit our enemy, okay? Another thing that we have to do is control the, don't worry about that, it's loading the stages, is control that, there. Um, sometimes we combine the combo with the assassination system. So we first of all have to make sure that we will not assassinate at the same time that we are you know, attacking with the combo. And then also, um, yeah, we have to basically make a sort of detection trace in order to do this. And we'll create a very accurate one. And you will see how we'll do it in a second. So first of all, let me, let's make sure that we don't go ahead and attack and assassinate at the same time. So the first thing I want to do is actually, first of all, change the key. So for the assassinations, it will actually be the left, uh, so the right mouse button. And the normal combos will be on the uh, left mouse button. So we'll just change a bit the assassination uh, input. Um, of course, it's just personal preference but we'll do so like that and then also we'll go ahead and change the radius so it's a bit more behind and smaller so we only can even assassinate when we are just in his back so to do this we're just gonna go into the third person uh, folder input and then in the collection we can just go into the assassin and here instead of using the left mouse button we can just press this icon over here and then in your mouse just press the right mouse button and there we go now it will go ahead and change Another thing that we have to do is now change the UI because it was saying, you know, left mouse. So I just go into UI in the SSNA blueprint, just go ahead and uh, widget, sorry, just open it, select the text, and then instead of M, just go ahead and replace that with an R. And that's it. We can just go ahead and compile and save. Great. So now what we have to do is select the um, dummy over here and then say Control E. So it will just directly open the blueprint. Great, so now we're going to do is go to the viewport and select the, uh, where is it, the assassination radius. And what we're going to do is get the radius and make it way smaller, okay? Let's make it around 35. And then go ahead and put it over here more into the uh, enemy's back. It was already pretty decent, uh, you know, in his back, but we can basically make it a bit smaller. So now we will press play and go over here. Now we can attack without any problems, okay? And then uh, it will not do both things. But when I get into his back, like really into his back, I can now press the uh, right mouse button and assassinate him. Really cool, okay. We are uh, having some cool things over here. Great. One thing before actually continuing with the combat system, let's go quickly into the third person character blueprint. And I want to change only one thing. And basically it's in the crouch. And some of you just let me know in the Discord that it's better if we just, instead of reversing it from the end, just go ahead and reverse it by normal. So let's go ahead and change that. So hold control and just put it up into reverse. This is because if, if we press quickly the control uh, twice 
um, it will not be like snapping into the end it will just continue from where it is it will just be a bit smoother so thanks for you know letting me know in the discord also you can go uh, go ahead and join the discord server in order to you know ask any questions put your progress and so on okay now yes we can close this blueprint and also the dummy and what we have to do is go ahead and go into blueprints and open the you know attack system component that we cl uh, created earlier don't worry about this note i just basically was making a slow motion for the thumbnail so it's easier for me to take a snapshot so yeah don't worry about that anyway so this is what we had in the last episode we'll build the combo system so now we basically have to make the um the trace okay basically the trace will consist of invisible um invisible capsules that will be placed exactly on the sword on the on the sword plate so when you know the, the sword gets through it um it will detect the enemy and so on so what we're going to do is comment all this so select everything press c and then this is going to be the combo uh, system uh okay I just put it in all caps no combo system and then let's put our uh, presets it looks a bit nicer great so let's go down over here let's right click and let's create a new custom event and this will be the start sword trace and basically this is what we're going to call from the animation montage in order to begin our trace okay so what we want to do now is go ahead and right click and create another custom event and this will be the sword trace loop so this will be basically the loop uh, which will be you know repeating itself once we are playing the animation so what we're going to do in here is get this uh output of the delegate and just drag it over here and what we can do right now is just go ahead and call this which is set timer by event let's go ahead and out uh left click to remove the connection you just put it on the start sword trace so basically we need to basically enable looping over here and put the time to be around 0.1 and we don't have to change any of the other settings so basically this is exactly what we did with the stamina system as you can see over here let me just open this just to showcase you guys what we did here is basically exactly the same we are repeating this event on all these things in this specific time uh, it's gonna be just looping basically so we are doing exactly the same but with our sword trace so in here we want to make uh, basically make a sword uh sorry sphere <laughs> trace by channel okay and we'll go ahead and detect all the objects and we are using a sphere trace instead of a line trace because it will just feel a bit better the you know the um, i guess the area of the sword and the shape and it will just be you know more convenient for us and we can tune it in so it's larger smaller so you can tune in the gameplay so it's easier to hit or harder to hit and so on so let's put the radius to be around 12 something like that and then what we have to do is basically get the starting point and the ending point so let's go on and compound save real quick and go into the third person cat blueprint let's go ahead and open this eye let's go into the viewport and in the last episode we went ahead and added a sword so let's go ahead and put two pins on this sword so we know when uh what wh where is the position where we'll start and finish so in this case it will be the tips so just go ahead and go to the sword right click on it sorry select the sword going on up here into the components and search for an arrow and this will be the uh, sword top point so this is where the top point of the trace will start another thing to be able, you know, be able to go ahead and change the uh, rotation and stuff of it. Let's go up here into the three points and disable real time. So now it will be paused. So it's easier for us to change this. So what we have to do is just put this up here into the tip of the sword and rotate this a bit. So let me also enable snapping back again. And let me just rotate it over here so it's facing that way. Really, the rotation doesn't matter, but I think it gets a bit you know, cleaner, honestly. They just arrows pointing everywhere <laughs> um so there we go you can see my exact coordinates here so it's around minus a uh, hundred as you can see great and another thing that we have to do is duplicate this and this will be the sword bottom point okay and basically we'll go ahead and put this at the start of the blade pretty much and now we can go ahead and rotate this back here and then put this 
let's change the this will be a five so it's a bit there we go so around here and then the top point i think we can manage to put it over here so minus 110 so there we go we have just the blade um so we have two points basically the top and the bottom point so basically our sphere trace will be around in these two points so now we can just compile and save so let's go back into our attack system component and what we can do right now is go ahead and go into components and get the character mesh sorry not the character mesh we want the whole blueprint so what we can do is actually before we do the character mesh as we did in the last episode to get the well the mesh of the character we can also go ahead and just right click promote this to a variable and this will be the um basically the blueprint so character bp and let's go ahead and set this there we go so now what we can do is directly access the blueprint for from any time so we can just go here get it and then what we can do is get the top and uh, sword top point and stuff so let's go ahead and do that so this will be the sword it will go down you will see here the variables and then get a uh, sword top point and what to do is just get the weld location of this uh, specific socket and just put it into the star and now we do exactly the same so get again the character blueprint uh, we will basically get the sword but bottom point this time go down here it is and then we'll copy this node and paste it plug it in and this will be the end point basically our bottom point it doesn't matter the order you can do it the other way around but whatever and now we will go ahead and just draw a debug um so we can see how it looks so let's go into the full duration and put this to be 0.1 seconds and great so now we can actually start seeing how it looks so right now we have to call this so of course we will call it from an animation notify from an a montage so it will play exactly where we are swinging the sword but just to test real quick let's go into the attack input and just put here the start um sword trace which is right over here so we can just see how it looks let's compound save go and press play and now you will see that if i attack we see the trace there we go so basically this will detect all of the objects that the um, sword will go through so when we get into our enemy we'll be able to deal damage if it goes through as you can see when it gets green is that it's detecting the uh, something and you can totally play with the here with the two points with the radius to make it look uh, how you want and and feel how you want and stuff great so let's go ahead and delete that uh, start sort trace at the input because we don't need it we will create a an amount uh, notify sorry so this is exactly what we're going to do before we continue on so let's go back into the project um files over here and what we're going to do is go into blueprints and create a right click blueprint class and go into all classes over here and search for a name notify and this time instead of a a, um, a normal notify it will be basically a state so in the last episode we just uh, you know normal notifies for our combo but this time we'll use an an notify state for this trace and you'll see the difference in a second let's go ahead and select it and this will be a bp underscore let's say oh my god they just saved okay bp let me rename this bp underscore notify underscore let's say a uh, sword uh, trace uh, loop okay you can call it whatever you want let's go ahead and open this real quick so basically we will have the function over here that we can override so basically we want to go into the received notify begin basically when the notify starts and then what we want to do is do a very similar thing that we did in the last episode for a combo which is get the mesh component and let's say get a owner right over here and now we can go and use this to cast to our third person character and there you go plug this in so now what we want to do is basically get the bpc um attack system component and now we can go ahead and call the start sword trace there we go and now we will go ahead and just plug that into the return node over there and now we'll do the same for the uh stop so we'll go into override and say receive notify end let's go real quick into the begin and get this three nodes so it's faster for us copy 
and just go to the end and plug this paste this put this over here there we go and now remember to get the mesh component and plug it into the get owner and on here we have to create a new uh, custom event so let's go quickly into the attack system component and now right over here let's go ahead and create a new custom event which in this case will be the uh basically stop sword trace okay and now what we want to do is basically you stop this timer so we'll do exactly what we did with the normal um with our uh, stamina okay so basically we need to uh, basically create this variable and then call this node over here so let's do the same let's go into the attack system go into the return value right click promote variable this will be the sword trace uh, loop doesn't okay sword trace loop so we're all together great and now what we can do is just get the sword trace loop on here the variable that we have just created get it and then say clear and invalidate timer by handle and this will automatically just stop uh, this loop over here and now we can just compound save and go back into our notify and then just get it from our component and just say stop uh, sort trace and there we go we can just go ahead and get this plug it in and then go ahead and plug that in great so now you will see that we can begin and stop so probably you've seen well in the last episode it was just a single pin there was no way of knowing if it, you know it was beginning or ending so that's the difference between a a notify and a state so let me just show you what i what i mean so let's go quickly into our attack animations so let's go into characters rpg character animations and then let's go ahead and go into the uh what was it sword attacks and we need to go into the montages so let's go first of all into the attack one montage and you see a bit how it looks over here so basically we need to get the starting position of our attack so in this case you can see it will be around here so basically where the blade is starting to go ahead and run so we are around in point 25 so what to do is create another um another how how do you call it a section of notify track of notify let's go here to tracks okay and add notify track and those will be the sword trace and this is just to have everything a bit more organized Let's go here, right click, and then go into add notify state. And now you will find here our BP notify sword trace loop. And now you see that we have in this case a start and end point. In here, it was just a starting point, a single pin. But in here, we have a start and end point. That's the difference between the state and the normal notifies. So now here we can determine the start position and the end point. So this is exactly what we're doing in the notify when he said start trace and stop trace so basically when the sword finishes the animation right over here kind of we will go ahead and put it here so the second pin so around point 30 so it will only be this fraction of the animation where the sword uh, trace will be happening and then it will finish as normally great so let's go ahead and do the same with the other animations now you will see with the attack 2 it's a bit different it's more like it just stabs into the uh, character so the trace will be a bit different let's go ahead and skip that for one second and go directly into the attack 3 which is basically where it just goes ahead and launches this heavy attack which looks pretty cool so the heavy attack will kind of start over here i guess the sword trace so again we can just go into the notifies and add a new track this will be the sword trace and then go over here right click add notify state and then our new thing and now we can find the endpoint which will be kind of over here we just land it so around 1.53 and then just drag it into there and there we go save it and close it and now again our last attack is a kick so we will use the same system as the stabbing so it will be a bit different because in here well the sword would not do anything of course okay so now it should be working so now as you can see the trace is not happening but when i start attacking okay sorry uh, nothing is happening um so basically in the what is it here no in the combo no combo next no it's uh blueprints here it is in the attack trace and the notify uh begin and, and okay so in the begin 
yes we are getting this the component and then the sort uh, start trace uh, maybe I think it's because it's very fast this could be yes okay so you saw it there all right look see it's happening there so it was very fast so there was not issue uh, so let's go ahead and just do it a bit longer for its first attack animation RPG character animations uh, sword attacks attack one so it's actually very fast so let's start a bit sooner at like point 23 and let's end a bit later like at point 32 so also we can go ahead and preview it another thing that we can do is go into the component and put the duration to be around uh, point what point two instead of point one so be a bit longer and yeah it's, it's very hard to see but you saw it for one second there uh, it's basically happening another thing that we can do is increase the loop so point zero zero one and and now it will be basically more accurate because it will be launching more cats as you can see there we go so now it's a bit more accurate as you can see um which maybe is what we want maybe not but don't worry about that but yeah basically now it's happening and you can see this only happening while the fraction of the animation is, is is playing so this is exactly what we want great so there is a few more things that we have to do in order to continue of course so first of all before adding the damage and the hit animation to this guy and stuff we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, uh, stab trace and also the kick trace so we would use the same trace for it so let's go ahead and close this close this and go into the attack system component let's go ahead and select all this press c and this will be the sword trace over here and we will apply the preset into the comment there we go so everything is nice and organized put this over here let's go ahead and go right over here and create another custom event and this will be basically the sphere trace it is a very bad name i don't know really how to call it it's just a general trace in front of the player so we'll see if we change the name later on but basically we need to make a sphere trace uh, by channel so what is it here and the starting point and the end point will be right in front of the player so you see what we'll do in a second now the radius let's say it's going to be around 25 because it's going to be a bit bigger and let's say that we need to uh, debug it for duration great so let's go quickly into the third person guide to blueprint which i just, i don't know why i'm always closing it and opening it but here it is let's go into the viewport and we'll do exactly the same that we did with the sword let's go into the general top of the blueprint and the parent basically and just add an arrow and this will be the sphere trace and now we can just get it and put it a bit forward and basically the sphere trace will just appear there so it will just align real quick to where our sword is ending in this tab and where our kick is happening which is around here so we'll play with the values later on but let's go ahead and compile and go back into our um component and now we can just get our character blueprint once again and then say get uh what was the sphere trace let's go down and here it is so now we can just get the wild location of it is plug it into the start and into an endpoint because this is a sphere it doesn't matter because it has a radius so it can be the same and now what we can need to do is uh well command this go ahead and just complete the sphere trace and let's put a parenthesis here i say for stab and kick so we just have it clear later on if we forget for what uh, you know this was because the name is not very good let's see if later on i come up with a better name but great so now we have to call this so basically this will be a bit different because instead of a uh, state it will be just a normal regular notify because i mean a step is just a step it's pretty quick and the kick is pretty much the same thing it's just kicking it just happening once it's not like the blade that has to be the whole duration of it so let's go back into the third person map content blueprints let's go create a new blueprint class all classes and then anim notify and this will be a normal notify selected and let's say bp underscore and notify underscore and this will be the sphere trace let's go ahead and open this up put it over here and in functions going to override and received notify and do exactly the same get the mesh component get the owner 
great and then we want to get this cast to the third person uh, character and put this over here now what to do is basically uh, get the um, BPC uh, attack system component and then say the spear trace so there we go let's put it over here and there we go great so everything is nice and clean so the only thing left is go into the animations so it's going to characters RPG animations and then in the sword attacks we can go into the attack too and then basically right where it stops so around around here kind of in point 40 we can go into the notify drag it uh, add notify and then it's gonna be the BP notify sphere trace and that's it save close it as we go back into the kick montage I'll do the same thing go and right when it does the kick around in point 46 let's go into the notify track add notify and then BP notify sphere trace and now if we press play we can go ahead that there we go there we go there we go so you can see that the sphere trace is happening right at the point for so basically for the kick as you can see it's pretty good um but for the um, stab it's not in the best place you can see it kind of goes through the player so let's go into the third person and just make this bit forward now don't worry because basically this sphere of course is invisible and then it will go through the player so you will not notice it let's go ahead and now implement the damage into the enemy okay so let's go back into the attack system component and now we're just gonna put these field trays into the right over here because we need some space in order for our damage so right when we do the loop and do the sphere trace, we're gonna get the return value and make a branch. So just make sure that we uh, will only apply damage if we actually have detected an object. Let's go ahead and get the out hit and also break it and then extend it. So we have all the parameters of the object that we have basically hit over here. Now we're gonna make sure that we are only hitting the enemy. So what we're going to do is create a tag. So let's go over here into the third person map uh, well basically use the content of row select our dummy and control e to open it up let's go into the class defaults and then go and search tag and you will see the uh, actor tag let's go ahead and add a new one and this will be damageable there we go uh, did i spell it correctly i think so okay so basically this will be the tag that we will add to all the objects that we want to apply damage when we hit with our sword, kicks or whatever. So later on, if you're going to create new enemies or even just objects that you can destroy with your sword, you will basically add the damageable tag into the actor. Let's go ahead and compile and save and close it. So now we just go back into the tag system and then we will basically make an ant condition. So just get the, this and make an ant. So basically, we need to be able to hit with something and then make sure that the hit actor has the tag damageable and then plug that in so we'll basically only continue we have actually hit something and then it has the tag damageable great so now what to do is get the hit actor and then call this node which is apply damage but now we will only continue uh and do it once so let's get the uh, true and then do once because the thing is that this is a loop so it will play multiple times uh, when our sword is swinging so we only want to do it once so let's go and put it in a do once over here that will click this to make it a bit more organized and put it over there let's get this free trace put it bit to the right there we go and then we'll uh, basically apply damage over here so later on we will have a database with all our uh, weapon damage and stuff when we get into the equipment but just for now we can just go with, for example 10 just have a simple base damage to test our game and then what we're going to do is make a delay and then we want to be able to you know put our um our do ones to reset it because if not the next time that we go ahead and attack we will not apply damage so we have to reset this so we will apply a delay so this will be point five yeah something like that so i get the uh, completed and just put it in reset double click and then we can just put it in between these nodes so it's a bit more organized and put this over here great so this will 
gonna be the delay just making sure that you know you know the, the do once resets and we don't apply damage uh, 20 times uh, with the same animation you know what i mean okay so that actually should work now we'll do exactly the same for our sphere trace for the tab so what we can do is basically get all these notes okay so you just get everything cop uh, ctrl c to copy it go here paste it and then we'll go ahead and put it here plug it in and then get the return value plug it here get the out hit plug it here now we will not need the do once because this time this is not a loop this is just a single anim notifier so we can delete this delete the spin the spin and the delay and just directly plug in the uh, applied damage over here and that's it we can now go ahead and compile and save but let's extend this comment so it's a bit more organized and there we go so that should be it if we hit play go over here and then go ahead and deal damage into it now there's no way that we're now going ahead and seeing this and also as you can see we have some errors over here in the branch um because yes oh sorry so we actually cannot use the ant and the reason for this is that well maybe if we have not detected an object we are already checking what is that uh, tag for the object so basically we're accessing the object even though we have not detected an new object so we need to delete this and plug the return value in here and then make another branch in the true with this one okay yeah so sorry about that i did not uh, realize that until now so get this and delete it get the return value put it over here and then in true we're gonna make another branch so it has to be separate uh, because of now we were accessing the actor even though we have not collided with anything so we were getting errors anyway so now in order to detect if we are colliding with the enemy and applying damage let's go and get the um enemy control e well the dummy for now let's go down over here and just go into the apply damage uh, sorry no apply damage not event sorry right click event any damage so basically when this object or actor in this case the dummy receives damage it will call this node so in here just to make sure everything is working let's go ahead and print use uh damage there we go <laughs> so now we will see this printing on the screen so now if we go here uh so just take a look in the top left on the screen when i attack you can see damage there we go and it's happening back okay great so of course instead of damage we want to play our hit animation and all that cool stuff let's go into dummy and delete this string and what to do is get this and say uh, play anim montage and now in here we need to pass our hit animation that we just imported earlier on so let's go back into our pro files rpg character animations in the hit reacts let's select both right click and create an anim montage and there we go we have them in anim montage so basically what we're going to do to make things more dynamic is play a random one uh, depending on uh yeah basically a random one between the two so what we have to do is create a new variable and call this um hit animes and this will basically be animation montages let's go and search for a name montage object reference and now with the variable selected we go into the variable type and put this to be an array so it will be a list of this uh variables so select the variable and then add two animations in this case it will be the hit react left and hit react right and now what we can do is go here and get the hit names get it and then you say get a copy and now instead of accessing the copy zero which in this case will be always the uh, left montage what we can do is do a random integer in range the first point will be zero but the maximum point will be basically uh one so in this case, we want to get the hit names, get it, and then say get uh, get the length, length, and then basically decrease it by one. Because if not, it will be getting one more. So now, there you go, it will go and get a random animation from those both, and then play it. There you go, so we can go ahead and check it out. So we go over here, there you go. It's now going ahead and 
Okay, <laughs> the combo went very far. There you go. I believe it's playing a random one. Yes, it's playing a random one. Great. So you can see that it's happening. Now, there's a few things that we have to do. First of all, let's add a knockback force to this character. Because right now, it's playing the hit animation, but it's just standing still. And it looks a bit weird. So we're going to go into dummy back again. And then we're going to call this now, which is launch character. And this will basically just apply a force. So what we want to do is apply a force towards the direction that the player, uh, basically, yeah, the player is actually attacking. So what I want to do is first of all cast to the third person character, and then the, the object will be the get player character. So we'll be just accessing our player. And now what I want to do is basically get the actor rotation. And we will find out the uh, get forward vector. So basically, the direction that the uh, player is looking. And then what we can do is just multiply this value and convert this vector into a float. So it will be a nice number. And now, this will be around, let's say, 700. This is the force that it will go backwards. And we say, why it will go backwards? Well, because normally our player, when it's attacking, it will be always looking towards the the enemy so it will you know, push it back if it's facing us so let's go ahead and just plug it here into the launch velocity and that's pretty much it so now if i press play go over here we see then when i attack there we go it's going backwards slowly as you can see i'm dragging this guy backwards and it's really looking really cool okay so let's quickly go ahead and implement a camera shake because i have noticed that in assassin's creed origins which is the game that we are referencing and basing this rpg series has some tiny camera shake when we hit so it's a bit more satisfying let's go ahead and do that let's go into blueprints right click blueprint class let's go into all classes and search for camera shake and there we go and let's go down and you will see this legacy camera shake let's select it this will be bp underscore camera uh, well what just happened oh my god i don't know why it's auto saving every time i'm typing anyway uh, let's rename this BP underscore hit camera shake. Well, actually, sword hit, just in case is we will use another one for later on. So we can now go ahead and open this uh, sword hit uh, camera shake blueprint, and we'll basically change some of the options here. So in oscillation duration, we'll change it to be 0.15 because it will be a very very fast. Then we'll go into the rotation and we will change the pitch to be 1.2 and then in the frequency of 50. And then we'll just basically change a bit the rotation so it looks a bit nicer. Let's go ahead and open the uh, locomotion and I will go into the X, Y and Z and we'll apply some force in all the vectors. The amplitude over here will be around, let's say, um, 1 and then this will be 50. And then the initial offset, we'll go ahead and basically put it at 0. And the Y, we'll go ahead and put this to be 1, and then the frequency at 50, and leave this random, and then in the Z, so and 1.2, and then 50 again, and there we go. So now it will just be applying some force in all the directions uh, of the camera. And now what we need to do is go ahead and, well, apply the camera shake. So let's go into the attack system, and basically right when we hit, it will need to go ahead and play this camera shake. So let's take this a bit into the right over here. Let's put this note here. And let's go ahead and drag this and say uh, play weld camera shake. Now the uh, the class will be the one that we have just created, sword hit camera shake, and the epicenter will be the location of the object that we have just hit it. And I can double click to make things a bit cleaner and put this on the top, let's say, so it looks a bit nicer. And then the outer radius will be how far away we want to be able to hear, well, not nah, here, not to play the camera shake. Let's put something as 2000, okay? It doesn't really matter because it's just us for us to the player to feel the good feeling. And the inner radius zero and everything as default. Great. And we'll do exactly the same. So copy this and go over here and play it right after in the normal uh, sphere trace. And. In our case, we have we have copied. We don't have to change anything, but get the location to be over here. Let's go ahead and double click and put this up uh, on here once again. 
and compile and save and there we go so now if we press play and go into this guy there we go we have a really cool um simple camera shake going on so don't worry about that you go pa, pa, pa. you know oh that feels so good so there we go so of course there's a lot of tuning in if you want in the future we can create a separate socket for the uh kick or whatever so it's a bit smoother but you can see the really feeling pretty good and we are attacking towards it and pa, pa, pa. Ah, it looks so cool and with the camera shake feeling it is really good like the combo is feeling incredibly nice okay so let's quickly go ahead and implement some sounds so again i will be leaving them in the description so you can go ahead and load them let's go into the audio folder and let's create a new folder over here which will be basically um sword uh, hits let's say okay you need to put an underscore let's enter here and let's open the folder let's go here and in my case is in sword sounds and let's get all of these ones and just drag them in so again i will be leaving them in the description and let's minimize this okay Ctrl shift s to save everything great so basically we will need to play all these sounds so if we take a look and listen to them i don't know if you will hear them very good or not but basically we have this sound so what we'll do is play all of them at the same time okay um yes yeah, so we'll be playing them all at the same time so let's go ahead and just go into the um attack system let's go over here and create a new custom event which will be play sword sword hit sounds and what to do is just drag this and say get sorry no play uh, sound at location the location will be well the actor itself so say just get actor location as well we will need to get uh the owner so get owner and now we can get the get actor location from it if i know how to type okay i don't know how to type okay there we go okay so we're getting the, the location from the actor and then the uh, attunation will be the character so we'll be playing a 3d space and the sound we want to play let's say that the, the um, uh, hit one so just the hit let's copy paste this then we'll play the hit two uh, which is where is it oh it's sword hit wait which one okay hit sword hit let's select it here and put this arrow okay and then lastly we have the sword hit two Okay, so we'll play all of them as once. Let's connect all of these pins into here. And then put a comment and play sword hit sounds. Put over here. And the comment call will be our preset. And now we need to call them, of course. So in here, right after we play the camera shake, we will do the play um, sword hit sounds. There we go. Let me put this here. Get this over here. And then in here, we do the play sword hit sounds and uh, put it here. Okay. Now, you copy and uh, so compile and save. You go over here, and now you will hear the sounds. Okay. <laughs> so, there's a few things that we can modify. Okay. First of all, I think this hit sound doesn't sound very good actually. So let's actually go ahead and skip this sound over here for now. I don't think it looks very good. Um, but the other ones do sound pretty well, I guess. There you go. Okay, I just motion warped into my enemy. Okay, so I think that we can do is again, like we did in one of the last episodes, with footsteps, is make it dynamic with basically uh, a meta sound. So let's quickly go ahead and do so. Right click go into sounds and we'll do a meta sound source and this will be ms underscore sword hit and what we'll do actually is play all of them in one let's open this get this and let's say play wave player mono and in here we'll go ahead and play the first hit sound so in our case it's not this one it's the sword hit let's go here and plug it and then the pitch let's go ahead and say random float and we'll go ahead and just plug it into the next and into the next and it will be around from minus three 
two, three. So now we'll be kind of dynamic. And uh, we need to, of course, plug the uh, mono here and the unfinished to here. So now we can hit it. And we're gonna even make it more dynamic with minus five and five. Yes, yeah, much better. And another thing that we can go ahead and do is play them all at once. So then we can just copy and paste this and put the unfinished to just play the sound. Or actually, on nearly finished. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that sounds. And unfinished, now we'll play the other one, which is um, basically Sword Hit 2. So basically, we'll play all of them at once. And on here, we're gonna plug two monos on here. So, what we need to do is do this thing, which is uh, what was channel uh, mono? It was something of mono. There we go, mono mixer. And in this case, it will be two because we have both. So, we'll plug the output here, and then one here, and the other one here. There we go. So, now. No, <laughs> okay, no, no, no. And this will be on play because now it sounds uh, a bit weird, basically. And now. There you go, you see how it sounds. And we'll also get a pitch and just plug it on here so we get a value from there, too. Oh, yes, yeah, sounding very good. I don't know if you can really hear it with the recording because I have the sound of the desktop a bit lower than my mic, but it is sounding pretty good. Let's go back to the dummy, and now what we can do is, sorry, dummy not into the tag system, and on here, instead of doing all this mess that we did, we can just call the meta sound. Now let's go quickly into the meta sound, and we will go into the source, attenuation, and again put the character, so remember to do so. And now back into the attack system, we can just delete all of this mess over here, and we can just go and search for the MS uh, sword hit. And there we go. So now it should sound much better than what we had a few seconds ago. So let's go here. Let's start attack. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so nice. And let's quickly, quickly, quickly go into dummy and apply a, a grunt when it gets hit. So let's go ahead and say play sound at location. And then this will be, uh, what was it, grunt or death or... Oh. <clears throat> That too, I think it sounds pretty good. And then we say get actor location, put it here, and the attenuation character. And then the pitch. Actually, we can also do the same with the method. Instead of the meta sound, we can do it here. So random floating range from minus five. So what, well, minus three to uh, five? Sorry, three. So we'll do the same with the meta sound, but in the blueprint. So. Look, if we go here. Okay, <laughs> it is very, very, very um, too much. So minus 1.5 to 1.3. It was. Do you see? Do you, did you hear, guys? That, that was very deep. Uh. Ah, that's much better. Okay. Everything is going ahead and feeling so so good. I'm liking how it is turned now So of course we will need to make a tire lock and then we can maybe dash a bit and then also play the blood Effects, so we'll go ahead and do so uh, Let's see if we can do so in the next episode So we'll add the blood effects that we need maybe add two more sounds So it's a bit better and the target aim so we can dodge this guy out and that and then later on, we'll add the dash, so we can uh, basically you know, make a pretty cool combat system over there. So that's it, guys. If you found it so helpful, I would really appreciate it. you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so if you're gonna go ahead and check them out, go ahead. Join my Discord server, so you can go ahead and share your progress with the RPG series or any game that you're making. And also, go ahead and ask any questions to me or other devs. Follow me on all my socials, such as Twitter and Instagram. And now, yes, with all said, bye bye.